Welcome everybody to worship here at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church. We thank you for joining us today and whether you're joining us live or viewing us at a later time, we are still one body in Christ and one community in God's presence, so we welcome you. Also, a big hello to everybody out there that's live here in our audience and our campus here with our worship service. And at this time, if you want to get out a candle and light it to invite in the presence of Christ, as we enter into our fourth century, fourth century of operation here inside this sanctuary and on this beautiful acreage of land that God has given us, we are now ready to make history. We have been making history for 323 years and we will not become a museum. Many of our upgrades that we are doing today will enable us to go into the future and keep this ministry strong and continue to serve our community, and our neighbors with love. You have asked for details, and we are ready to give you an update here on our audiovisual, our sound, and our electrical system upgrades to our sanctuary. 
My name is Steve Eisenhart. I'm currently serving as the president of the Church Council this year, uh, involved in the property committee for a number of years, and am uh, heading up, along with Scott Reppa, uh, the design and implementation of the new uh, lighting, sound, video, and electrical upgrades here in our sanctuary. The most important part, in my opinion, is the updates to the electrical system, which have not been touched since 1969. And in the open walls that some of you see each Sunday, we've also discovered older wiring, such as knob and tube, which we've eliminated, and other types of uh, insulation that is now outdated and could result in a fire if the circuit were ever to be overloaded. The entire sanctuary uh, is being rewired with modern cabling, meeting all the current electrical codes, and this is the last portion of our building to be updated as such. There is a new panel in the narthex. Uh, prior to this work, this is where the lighting for the sanctuary was controlled. There will be new control stations for our lighting, as well as the ability to control the lighting from a mobile device anywhere in the sanctuary. Hello, my name's Scott Reppa, and I am a volunteer here at New Hanover Lutheran Church. And for the last 20 years or so, I've been working with the audio and video systems here that serve the congregation. So our, our current sound system is a purely analog system, and it has no video capability whatsoever. And now with the multimedia approach that we have to worship where we're broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook and where we're bringing in uh, all kinds of instrumentation that we never did in the past, we, the new system gives us the capability to bring all that together and to really put forth a, a professional quality system where everything will be integrated into one console where we're going to have a beautiful window that looks through into the congregation here where we can see and hear what's going on and where I'll be side by side with the person who is doing the video so that we can collaborate while the service is going on. Hello! We wanted to show you what's going on here at New Hanover since we last talked to you about our AVL and our electrical update system. Steve, what have we got done so far on this project? Uh, all of the equipment for all of the projects has been ordered. Most of it is on site. The Electrical work uh, has begun, as most of you have noticed, on a Sunday with uh, holes and walls open in the narthex so that we can run wires. Those will stay open until we can find the time to run the sound and the video wires. So we've gotten a lot of the visible work done. You can see by the holes we've opened up in the walls at the back of the sanctuary. But the lion's share of what we have left to do is the invisible stuff that you can't see. And it's also the most time consuming because we're going to have to try and get into some spaces that haven't been gotten into in a long time in order to get the wiring run to all the different locations we need for microphones and speakers and video cameras and all the other uh, bells and whistles that go along with the system. And we're installing state-of-the-art equipment while keeping our historical integrity. Hey, that's where to keep the sermon length buzzer. Starting this week, we have been closing up the holes and we have also, after Easter, we are ready to start installing our cameras and our new sound equipment. These upgrades will enable us to project a better sound and also convey a better video to our people that are at home and also that are enjoying in-person worship right now. Safe, reliable, state-of-the-art electrical and audiovisual command center. As I said in the beginning, we are here to make history. We are not here to create a museum. It would be a shame to see this ministry that's been thriving for over 323 years to become just simply a landmark that people come to view and say, oh, that church must have been great. Instead, with your help today, we are going to make history instead of having this as a historical landmark. In addition, I want to thank you also for your prayers. I ask you to pray daily. If you cannot give now, keep us in your heart. Keep us in your prayers as we move forward in helping this community thrive. So we just ask for your patience uh, and want you to know that it will be worth it in the end. With your one-time or continuous support, we will continue making history here a history that has gone over 323 years while keeping our historical integrity. Hey, is that me? 
So together, with your help, we're going to make history here at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church. We will not be a museum, but we will be making history daily to help and love our neighbors. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody have a little bit of an Easter hangover? I know we do, right? <laughs> but it's so good to see everybody today. I hope we're all all pumped up and ready to go. He is risen. Hallelujah. Very good. Well, I you might be noticed, you might be look, looking around and you thought, no, well, there might be a new person up front here. And hi, we introduce uh, Violet Mandic. Thank you for joining us, Violet. And she is our Grace Band leader. So you should be seeing more of her, right? You're coming back next week, right? Yeah. There you go. Okay, cool. So uh, you can learn more about Violet. We'll be posting um, her biography and so forth and putting them into bulletins and getting the information together out for you so you can learn more about her and meet her. So thank you very much. But without further ado, could you please rise as you are able? And since we went... A whole Lent season without singing hallelujah. Um, I am so happy we're back singing our hallelujahs. The Lord is risen. 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, please turn to your um, worship uh, hymnals, that's the word, and <laughs> let us turn to number 382 and sing together, Christ is risen, alleluia. Please be seated. Could the children please come forward? Anybody else that wants a message? Come on down. 
I loved last week when uh, we thought at the second service there'd be no children initially, so I came and sat down, and then luckily children came because they were able to help me back up. So that was good. <laughs> that was very good. Hi, good morning. How are you today? Doing good, Noah? Huh? Yeah. We got more coming down, so we'll be just waiting to hang out a little bit. So, how was your Easter week? Good. Is all the candy gone yet? No. Ooh. You gonna eat candy when you get home? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love those shoes. Hi. Nice. Turn your. Wow. <laughs> That's a great jacket. Yeah, that's cool. Well, today we want to learn and we want to talk about precious. You know, not like did anybody see Lord of the Ring? Not like precious, but precious. So if you had something precious and you wanted to uh, hide it and make sure that no one got it, where would you put it? Any ideas? Oh, you don't want to tell, I'm sorry, you got three sisters sitting next to you. You know, you know we got all these siblings, and they don't want to tell to give away their spots, do you? Because sisters are always looking for your stuff, aren't they? <laughs> and brothers, huh? Well, anyway, would you put it inside of a, a plastic Easter egg, huh? Easter egg, huh? No, it doesn't seem very secure, does it? But I want you to, so I'm going to put very something very precious, Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put the first one on, but then I want you guys to help me out. Okay, so I'm going to seal my egg. So no shaking, just, and I'll start over here. Okay, take the egg, take the tape, okay, and you wrap, help me, help me make it secure. Junie, do you want to help me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here, take the egg. Now take the tape, and you wrap it around and help me make this really nice and strong so no one can get my precious in the side there. Okay. Thank you. Cool. So probably during COVID, we wouldn't be doing this. We're not allowed to touch anything, but anyway. <laughs> This is post-COVID, you know, the pandemic, right? <laughs> Very nice. At least I don't have them licking it, you know? That would probably be... Ew! We used to do that. <laughs> we liked it. <sighs> Ew! <laughs> oh, things have changed. There we go. Go ahead, put it all on there. Oh, you did an excellent job. I give it to your sister. Okay. Here, you wrap it up. Make sure I, no one can get in there for me, because I don't want anybody to get it. Oh, that's fantastic. Pass it, Taryn. Go ahead. Make sure it's really nice and strong. I don't want anybody to get it. Okay. Here you, Here you go. Oh, you guys are doing so good. No one's ever going to get into my egg. No one. No. Very good. Oh, you did an excellent job. Okay. There you go. Big piece. That's okay. You got it. Ooh. Wow. You guys must have done this before. Excellent. No. Okay. Here we go. Okay. One more. Okay. You ready? Big piece. Oh, you're going to go north and south. That's great, because now no one can get in the ends either. Okay, cool. Okay, so my egg and my precious is safe in there, and no one's going to get it, right? You guys all did an excellent job. Okay, well, you know, sometimes I do, I do magic up here, right? I show you little magic tricks and that kind of stuff. So let me, let me let get back here, and you guys wait here. Wait a minute. Booga, 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 booga. 
I don't know about Alexam. What? Not the, of course it is. It's not the same egg? Yeah, because it's a different color blue. Oh. Well, I didn't say I was very good at magic, did I? Well, Jesus. Jesus is so precious. It was such a gift to the world. But some people didn't want him to be, to get out. So when he died, they put him in a tomb. And then the, the Roman, the people that were like the, the, the officers and everything else, they said, that we're going to keep it really strong. So they put their biggest and strongest people around it. And they were, they were um, soldiers. And they put them around there and everything else because they protected the best soldiers in the world at that time. And then they put big seals across that were chains and everything. And that's what you guys did with the tape. You signified the chains. But guess what? Guess what? The next day, the very next day, it was open. All the chains, all the soldiers, all the best they could do to guard it and not let him out, he got out. And why? He yeah. <laughs> well, yes, he said he was going to get out, and no one believed him, but it became true. And so I didn't do any magic. I really didn't. But what it did is that it tells us a story about we don't have to seal in those things that are precious inside of you. Like your laughter, that's precious. Your smiles, those are precious. Your thank yous, those are precious. Your words like please or help me, those are all precious. Things like I love you when you say those, those all come out. And those shouldn't be closed in and wrapped out. And Jesus was all about love. And no one could contain his love. Just like nobody can contain your love inside of you. So show that love. Okay? Can we pray? <sighs> Blessed Lord, we thank you very much that you did come out. As you promised. And as you told us. There were witnesses. Mary looked inside and saw you were not there. So let us believe, let us have faith enough that we let all the goodness out of ourselves as well. And all God's children said, Amen. well, thank you. And I hope that next time I will have a little bit better of a magic trick, right? Okay. Take care. God bless you all. And always remember, help the pastor up when he gets down. <laughs> Allow us now to hear the word of our Lord. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the way of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. 
This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you are forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven then. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to him, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Well, then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God! Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I know our children are getting smarter and smarter. I'm going to come up with new new tricks, <laughs> new magic. So, who did Jesus die for? Well, we talk this Easter season all the time about why he died, about his friends abandoning him, right? a corrupt legal system that sentenced him, and a corrupt and scary religious system that condemned him. However, today we get to hear who Jesus died for, and I think that is fantastic for the Easter season, but for every day. An assistant professor of New Testament at the Luther Seminary, Christopher von Kaufman, um, rolled in these words and these thoughts and, and I also like uh, uh, Christopher because um, he's also um, a conservationist and, and talk about sustainable food and feeding. <laughs> and so I'm attracted to his comments whenever I see him because that's what we do primarily, you know? We have our land, we do our reparation for the, um, uh, the floodplains here, and we have our organic garden and all that, and we feed, you know, 160 people per day on average with all the different ministries we do. And he makes this statement. He makes this statement, and I think it's very powerful to remember for each and every day of our lives. He remarks, and to whom did Jesus direct his deeds of power? To the sick and to the weary, to all of us who are weary and all have personal weaknesses, do we not? This power in the midst of weakness highlights the great mystery of this Easter season. It was not a God, and I, and I love this part, it was not a God clothed in thunder and lightning whom death could not hold. No. No, it was a crucified carpenter, an everyday person, with nail holes in his hands and a spear wound in his side. And even though the power of death could not hold Jesus, he still bears on his body the marks of human weakness. May the memory of those marks always remind you that Jesus is not ashamed. And then he goes into 
David's remarks in Psalms. Ashamed to look upon your weakness and may that reminder make your heart glad, your soul rejoice, and your body rest secure. And the question is, how many times have we felt, and you remarked either out loud or silently or to your partner or to someone else or come to confess to somebody that I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy about salvation, Christ's death, everything that we maybe even come in every Sunday feeling not worthy. And yet, and yet, here is Christ proclaimed last Sunday as we all gather together on Easter, and I hope every day, that the victor over death of us all truly did rise and was resurrected and was witnessed the tomb is empty, yes. The witness, Mary, has seen and talked to the risen Christ. You know, at every trial and so forth, and if you've ever been involved in some kind of legal trial, that they always ask for witnesses, do they not? And so here we have witnesses, but yet over the history of time, even though there was witnesses, it's discounted that Christ has risen for us all. And the disciples, you know, um, you know, the, so, you know, it, we get this story and we expect that, you know, after the resurrection happened, the Mary witnessed the tomb. She looked inside. Peter looked inside. Right. And, and John looked inside. Mary gets to witness two angels and then she even witnesses seeing Jesus Christ. So the disciples are out rejoicing. Right. And they're singing hymns of praise and. No, <laughs> no, they locked themselves in a room. They locked themselves and were hiding in a room even though they were witnesses of one of the greatest points of history. But here is exactly why we need this story of the disciples after Jesus died, and I think it's very appropriate. We don't want a story or don't need a story about them rejoicing and running through the streets. But we need this story about how Jesus died, was buried, and comes again to us. Because it's not a story of the disciples charging into the temple, right? Claiming Christ is alive, you know? They're like, and, and, and are going down to Pilate's piles. Could you imagine the disciples and all the thousands of people that were witnessing Jesus and alive going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> He's risen. He's risen. Ah. Yeah, maybe that would be a great story to have in our Bible, right? But no, they're like you and I. We're hidden in a room. You know, it was a room. And they locked themselves in. It is instead the Christ that I want to be reminded of. Because you see, if it wasn't for them locked away in a room with our own weaknesses, their own fears, and their doubts. Where would we be today when we're in those same shoes, right? It's the Christ who died for me and for you. It's the Christ who comes with his own wounds and weaknesses, right? To us when we are in fear and doubt. And I like that part that his wounds were still on his hands and the, and the side, right? Because it shows that, you know, I believe that Jesus Christ could have showed up without his wounds, right? He escaped the tomb, for crying out loud, right? He escaped the tomb with all its chains and locks and the best shoulders that Pilate had at his command. They were centurions. And you know why that they would have done anything to protect that tomb? Because as a centurion, if your prisoner escaped, you were put to death. Somebody had to pay the price in the Roman system. So if, they, if Christ escaped, you know... When they said those centurions were, you know, one went and drank and one, and one left, it's because one of them would have had to pay the price. So you know that no one volunteered that night. Oh, let's let them out. That's why I believe and I love that this passage is in here about Jesus Christ showing up. He showed up with his wounds, just like he passed through the walls and doors that were locked. He could have had his wounds all healed. But that's not the Christ I imagine. I want a Christ, 
Jesus came with his wounds without complaining, right? And also, Jesus came, and did you get the part? He could have very easily looked at Peter and said, I told you you were going to deny me, and you did. Three times. Is that written in here? No. Jesus shows love enough, and he doesn't have compassion. He doesn't rip Peter for denying him. And then he also could have, he could have just looked at all of them, all the disciples sitting there, and he goes, when we were in the garden, who went to sleep? Thanks, friends. Thanks a lot. But he doesn't. Because he comes there and they're all afraid because they think they're going to die too. They think they're going to be convicted. They think they're going to be, you know, put to death just like him. But he shows up with his own wounds when they're feeling hurt and mourning. He came when his family and friends needed them the most. Christ came to show them that, yes, I was beaten, I was stabbed, and I was nailed to a cross. However, as you have witnessed, I have risen. And you can rise too when you are down and you're beaten. Each of us, among our own weaknesses and carrying the burdens we have each day, to face each day, can be reminded by this story that the wounds in our sides, the nail holes in our hands and feet, so to speak, cannot prevent us to live a glorious resurrection like Jesus Christ. Christ has risen. Christ has died, and Christ will come again, and we all will too. Amen. Well, once again, I invite our Grace Band to please come forward. So now we heard the story of Open the Tomb, and I ask us all to please rise as we are able, and let us open the eyes of my heart, Lord.
Please be seated. Can I please invite up forward Scott Geyser, Todd Rothamal, and Nancy White, please. These are our, our newly elected council members. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you. Scott Geyser, Todd Rothmull, and Nancy White have been elected to church council. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that they will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 7. You have all been elected to a position of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witnesses to God, who gather us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation into worship, learning and witness and service and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful to your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be an example of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your siblings in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been appointed? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Could the congregation please stand? People of God, oh, and I ask you, could you please face the assembly? Sorry. People of God, I ask you, will you support Scott, Todd, and Nancy? And will you share in a mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help us. Okay, you can turn around again. I want to thank you. And the reason I had that, I want to honestly thank you. I stood in your shoes, and I understand what it was like to be on church council. It's, a lot of times people will phase over and go, oh, that's nothing. You just show up once a month. It's a simple one-hour meeting. <laughs> There's no big problems. Yeah, we just make some little decisions now and then. But on your shoulders, you have chosen to serve. Yes, I think throughout the years, you know, and I don't want to dissuade anybody for the future, but like Christ, there'll be holes in your hand, wounds in your side, but that's what church is all about. We all have our weaknesses, and we all have our challenges. But I want to thank you for the bravery and for the courage, but most of all, your faith in God. Your faith in God that has called you to serve and lead us. So, my brothers and sisters and everyone in Christ, I now to declare you installed as church members of this congregation. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Please let's show us our appreciation for those that have come forward to serve. Thank you. Amen. So at this time, also, I um, ask you to please be seated as you are, maybe. And a very special offer to Tori today, and Violet, we welcome you and thank you, and uh, please lead us in He is Exalted.
Could I ask John and Diana Hazel to please come forward? Hi. Come on up. Yep. You can step up here. <laughs> I want to thank you, and I think we all want to thank you. Uh, John and Diana. Amy, could you mute the uh, lectern? Thank you. Thank you. That's better. <laughs> so I want to thank you, and we all thank you for your time and your season with us for this past year, and then doing with the Grace Band, and they volunteer, and you came and be with us. They're going to take a short hiatus, right? You're back in July. <laughs> <laughs> But we thank you in peace, and we wish you all well in, the, in your furtherment, in your growth of your family, and also in your lives together and going forward. So thank you, and we appreciate everything that you have served us doing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, uh, we we're going to put it in as God we, uh, speed and farewell, but there's no farewell. You know. This, this, until you're able again. <laughs> well, anyway, please rise as you are able. And let us pray for the world and all those in need. God of peace, we pray for some sense of understanding of why the violence still happens. In our homes, last night, at a 16-year-old birthday party, at churches, and at schools. We just ask you, Almighty God, to send peace. And for those that have witnessed the cruelty of the violence, our hearts bleed for them. And we come to you, Almighty God, to comfort them in their grieving and give them hope that they so desperately need. Hear us, O oh God. God of all music and all rhythm of this cosmos and earth. We pray thankfully for the musicians that come to serve us, dear Lord, who volunteer their time and also that dedicated and joined the staff, dear Lord, to make sure that there is excellence in the praising of your word and the praising of your name and the praising of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God. And almighty and graceful God, we just now, we reach out for those of our community and extended community that need help, recovering from their sickness, their surgeries, and their illnesses, dear Lord. Whether it be physical or mental, dear Lord, we ask you to be with them now. We ask you that for caregivers, you give spiritual wisdom and discernment so that they can diagnose, treat, heal, and therapy to bring them back to wholeness once again. We say their names now aloud or silently in our heart. Sandy, Billy, Danny, Blessed Lord, be with them and their families. Hear us, O God. And almighty and gracious God, we pray for those who are grieving and those that have been part of our community and now rest in your arms. We especially pray for Wilma Buckholtz McCannon, dear Lord, and her family and friends. We pray for all those who are in grieving, dear Lord. Hear us, O God. All these things we pray for, dear Lord, and everything else that you know are in our hearts and our minds before where they're even spoken. And we ask this all through your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
I want to thank um, everybody for our sponsors. As I mentioned last week, we are going to have flowers every week, fresh flowers. So I encourage people to please honor their loved ones and or in memory of and uh, sponsors. So this week, um, I want to thank you for our bulletin for Doug and Betty uh, for an honor of their grandson, Wyatt. The flowers are for Nancy White. Nancy, you're just getting named all day today. So uh, it, it, it's a burden you'll have to bear. Okay. But happy birthday, Nancy, or 80th birthday, and also to their parents by Harry and Nancy. Thank you very much. I want to ask all those people that are serving today. Um, welcome once again, Violet. Thank you very much for joining our team here and our community and leading us in praise. Thank you. I want to thank you very much. And then also, um, we are having, it is getting active again. I don't, uh, my newsletter article for May, uh, a lot of churches like take off during the summer or it eases up. But not so much here, so, and I'm excited about that. And uh, uh, to prove so, there is a lot of family stuff going on. And when I say family, it's for all ages. Our last game night, is Nikki here? Hi. So we had all generations there for game night, right? And it was a lot of fun. And so we have another game night coming up this coming Saturday, 4 to 7 p.m. But the sign-up is there in your bulletins. You can find it at newhanoverlutheran.org. Um, and then also you can sign up um, in the bulletin. It shows up on the Sign Up Genius and our sign up on our website, right? At the sign up page, there's a tab. It says sign up. It's very easy. You just go to it. Uh, but we need to know by tonight, need to know by tonight if you're coming or not because uh, we're going to order food and also have appropriate setup for everybody. So sign up by tonight for game night next Saturday, 4 to 7 p.m. Also, geraniums for coming up for Pentecost. The, the donation um, is $6 for a single geranium, $20 for a 10-inch pot uh, containing three, and they will be um, um, put in, uh, been, so we're looking for our sign-ups by May 7th, and that's for Pentecost. And then also for family, gathering of the daughters. Now, this is happening in, in honor of Mother's Day, and uh, so all the men are cooking, is that right? There is no stopping this woman. <laughs> uh, un oh, you can use the microphone so they all hear you. Amy, un unmute the microphone, the lectern. <laughs> Yes, so it's in your bulletin on page 11, the gathering of daughters. Um, we don't all still have our mothers, but if you are a daughter or a lady, you are welcome to come. And the thing that's not in here is if you are not a daughter and not a lady and you would like to help that day and the day before with cooking and clean up and stuff, please let me know. Call me, text me, let me know out here so I can jot your name down, okay? And then I also, something else that's not in the bulletin is this Tuesday, we have a fellowship meeting at 7 o'clock. Would you like to come out and hang out with us and plan fun stuff? Let me know, and you can come out at 7 o'clock on Tuesday. We would love to have you. And my third and final thing yes. is um, we had a change in the date. So the chicken dinner, if you remember the chicken dinner from last summer, we wanted to have it in the Grove, and then it was like scorching hot, and we had to move it here to the church. We're going to have it in May, so you can mark your calendar. May 20th is our chicken dinner, and all the information will be in the bulletin next week. We'll have posters up. We are going to take reservations for that, but mark it in your calendar. Saturday, May 20th, 4 to 7, we'll be having our Swamp Picnic Committee chicken dinner. Thank you. Sally, now I inadvertently took out Lowe's and Fish's dinner for this Wednesday out of the bulletin. Are we having a Lowe's and Fish's dinner? I don't know. Okay. I can't really lie here. I don't know. Chris, okay. I, I didn't talk to you. Okay. No problem. No problem. I just wanted, I wanted to cover up. I made a faux pas, and I took it out because I thought it confused it with the food ministry. So anyway, um, we will send out a one call to everybody. Uh, as a note, if you don't get uh, messages, um, please sign up now. <laughs> So we'll let everybody know if there's going to be our loaves and fishes dinner um, right before the children's uh, choir practice. So anyway, uh, JAM leadership beginning in September, the elementary school. Um, we are looking for people to ha uh, help out, see Nikki, and also sign up. Kids camp is going to be coming. Um, it's going to be out of this world. 
So it's going to have a cosmic theme and so forth, and that's coming up. But please sign up, and also, if you'd wish to help out, we have an all-day kids' camp, too, this year. Is that correct, or am I just going off my feeble brain? Okay, so it's all day long. If uh, you moms and dads, if you need a break a little bit, um, please um, sign them up. It's an all-day ac account, but we need volunteers to help it. everything blast off, so help out. Um, also, um, if kids can serve as junior ushers, some children, this didn't come from us thinking, oh, here's an idea, let's just grow our, our ushers for the futures and so forth. But actually, some of our children have come forth and they want to help out ushers. So you can, and uh, contact Nikki again, or go up to our sign-up page, and you can look it up there, and you can sign up to be a junior usher and help out at our different events. So is there anything else for the good of this community? That's quite enough? Okay. Well, I welcome all our guests today, and I thank you. And we have some international guests today. <laughs> welcome. Um, you know, at one time, it, it, it was kind of funny because uh, when people, and I'd go to uh, clergy meetings during the pandemic, there people are like, oh, we have so-and-so, and, and we liked it. And then they watched, I said, well, we have international exposure. <laughs> all the way from Canada. So anyway... Um, thank you and welcome for coming in today, and we appreciate any, any visitors. But I ask you to please rise as you are able, pick up your hymnals, and let's sing together now to Green Blade Rises, number 379. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God. Go get them. <laughs>